Hello, my name is Bob. Welcome to a short stop on pool. Hey guys, I just recently bought my first set of pool balls and I got the Aramith Pro Cup TV balls in the traditional colors. It didn't take me long to realize that cleaning and polishing your balls by hand uh, kind of sucks. And I wanted to get a ball washer. And I know that I've seen a lot of uh, homemade ball washers before and I thought my, I might go that route. You know, some of them, you can make a pretty inexpensive ball washer with a Home Depot bucket. You can find designs on the internet that use a larger bucket, and what I didn't like about those is that the balls are kind of clinging together. Found some other designs where maybe there's compartments for the balls, and I like that, but again, you can only wash eight balls at a time. I was hoping to do something a little bit better where I can wash all 16 balls at the same time. I quickly found the uh, diamond ball polisher, but then I noticed Oh, the price. That's almost double what I paid for my set of balls. No offense, Diamond. I'm quite sure that you make a quality product that's very durable and lasts a long time. And perhaps it's intended more for pool halls than for home use. The same goes for the Ball Star line of uh, pool ball cleaner and polishers. This polisher from Alibaba looks pretty interesting. And it's got two trays, one for snooker balls and one for pool balls. But it's still on the pricey side. So I was looking uh, to do my own custom build. It doesn't have to be super cheap, but I'd like to get it in at under $100. And I thought it'd be kind of a fun, fun project. The criteria that I'm looking for is I want to be able to wash all 16 balls at one time. I want separate compartments for each ball. I would like the ball tray compartments to flip up so that it's easy to remove the balls when you're done cleaning them. And I didn't want to have to build my own box. Obviously, you know, I'm an amateur woodworker. I've got a shop in my garage and I could build something but it I'd like it to be easy and so I was hoping to find some type of larger compartment than a bucket that will accommodate all 16 balls so I went on a little hunt obviously at the uh, big box home improvement stores and here's what I found first of all most of these homemade products use this car detailing polisher you can find it at Harbor Freight it's pretty inexpensive less than 25 bucks then at Home Depot, I found this planner, which has, seems to have the right dimensions. And it's made of a really thick plastic. It's going to be easy to cut into and drill into and modify and turn into a ball washer. And then also at Home Depot, I'm sure you can get it at Lowe's too, they make uh, piping for underground plumbing and other projects. And it has a 4-inch inner diameter. You can get real thick-walled PVC, but this is this pipe is a little bit thinner wall, and it's about half the price. So it's 10 bucks for an 8-foot-long uh, pipe, which is going to be way more than I need. Those are the three main components I'm going to use to build my ball washer. So why don't you come out to the shop with me, and let's see what problems I encounter as I try to put this thing together. I'm going to cut a circle out of this quarter-inch plywood and uh, glue some fabric to it, and that's gonna be the part that spins inside the ball washer. So I traced the outline of the outside edge of the planter pot, and then I used a piece of the tubing and traced 16 circles inside, giving myself well, a, a half inch or so from the edge of the, the outside of the pot to the circles. They, almost make it i've got the last one that i drew overlaps so as long as i can fit these 16 circles inside of the large one then i think i can glue them or attach them together somehow so the next step is going to be to cut 16 of these to the right height probably about two inches and then place them on here and see if i can get the the uh the real thing to fit inside the circle well, let's cut 16 pieces I've got a stop lock set up two inches from the blade. Let's cut some pieces. <laughs> My blade was off square just a little bit, so I had adjusted it. And I think I'm square now, so let's try and cut the rest of them. That's a lot better. I 
cut a bunch of extra because some of my cuts had a kind of a spiral edge. So I'm going to try and see if I have 16 of them that have clean cuts on them. So now, can I fit, can I fit 16 of them somehow inside of this circle? Initial layout suggests no, I can't, but let me fiddle with it. Yeah, so it's pretty much five in the middle and 11 on the outside. Will they fit inside of my planter? No. So we're going to have to find a solution. Before I glue any of these, I'll give them a sanding on the edges. The hot glue is holding it real well, but I wonder how it's going to hold up over time. So I'm going to try a rivet. So the one side is plenty smooth. This is going to be lined with carpeting, so the ball will never, ever touch that. The other side sticks out a little bit. Once I get the carpet glued in there and put the ball in, as you can see, the ball is going to have plenty of room to roll around. And there's no chance that it's going to touch that rivet at all. And I like having a rivet to reinforce the hot glue. That'll keep it nice and strong. And I'll put a rivet on the top and the bottom, top, bottom, just alternate, and that'll keep it nice and strong. Nice. Now, I know that it most likely won't fit inside this lid, and it won't. But what I think I can do is figure out where most of it can fit. And then what I'll do is notch the lid, because I need to mount a piece of wood on here anyway for the hinge. A little longer than a few minutes later. So there's going to be no mistaking this for a homemade ball washer, but that's fine. So what I ended up, ended up doing was cutting away a section of the rim, cutting some wood and just screwing it in. And this, this planter has a really thick uh, lip, uh, lip around the top that's a little bit over two inches tall. So it's really strong, which is perfect for my ball washer. So now I'll need to mount a little spacer here and screw the, the these two rings of the ball washer into that spacer. And then I can mount a hinge on top. A few minutes later. A couple of inexpensive hinges and now the top is hinged. So I can easily access the balls when they're done being cleaned. So here's the Harbor Freight Drill Master car buffer for like 23 bucks. And the plan is to 
mounted inside the planter like this. Um, I'm going to cut this piece of plywood in a circle, the correct diameter so it spins freely inside. And then I will be mounting some foam or microfiber cloth or something onto this. And that's what the balls will spin on. So the first step is going to be how in the world am I going to get all this foam off? But then there's a plastic, this plastic ring I should be able to drill some holes to mount the plywood and that's going to be the next step. Right smack on 18 inch diameter. So on the polisher there's like a one inch diameter raised portion. I'll have to cut a larger hole in the center of my circle to fit on top of there. But, and I know that this has some oscillation to it, so that might be an issue. I might have to cut this down a little bit uh, to a little bit smaller diameter. So I don't want to cut this larger hole yet in case I need to trim this down. So I should have looked at this sooner, but if I turn this manually, it oscillates. In other words, this disc does not rotate around a center point. There's some variation. So here's here's one extreme. And the uh, yeah, maybe an eighth of an inch inside of this lip. But when I rotate this 180 degrees over to this side. Yeah, it's about three eighths of an inch. So there's a half inch of play from one side to the other. So my disc, my wooden disc that I so carefully cut is going to be too big because as this oscillates, it's going to hit the wall on either side. So let's get the circle cutting jig set back up and trim this down. Well, I need to find something to use that for. That's pretty cool. Seventeen inches on the nose. Now we're ready to cut a larger circle here and fit it onto the polisher. Now I need to figure out how to do a few countersunk screws around here. Probably just use four screws and that'll hold that on there. So I've cut two pieces of wood to the right width and one edge kind of has a profile to match the curve of the barrel of the planter. And I've got these two brackets. So the plan is to put one bracket around this handle and one on this handle. So as you can see, I didn't get I didn't match the profile perfectly, but it fits snug. The polisher is sitting right on top of my styrofoam base. So it's moving now, but as soon as I put a couple screws in from the outside, that's going to hold this um, nice and firmly in place, and I've got it centered right in the barrel. So let me put those screws in. So I have one screw securing one wood block, and what I'm finding I need to do is get my little level on the pad and turn it. And I've got to, uh, you need to adjust the surface of this polisher in three axes, X, Y, and Z, so you get it nice and level. And I've checked my my work surface to make sure that it's level. And I want to make sure. And then I'm also me measured from the side of the barrel to the center screw. If you see, there's two screws in there. the The recessed one is the center. The head of the polisher. I don't know if I can show you. Actually, pivots around that point. So that that screw is the center. So I need to measure from the center of that screw to the edge of the barrel in both directions to make sure I have it as close to center as I can get it at the same time as I'm making sure that it's level all the way around as I rotate it. So that's a little bit tricky, but once I get the the screw in the other in the wood block on the other side, then I'll be able to adjust the the pitch this way. And uh before I put the other screws in, then once I have those screws in place, I'll know, I'll, I'll be able to use the same screw holes because I'm going to need to take it out 
to mount the wood disc onto the polisher. So that's the plan. It turned out that those C brackets, those metal brackets, don't hold the polisher well when it's running because it just vibrates so much and it was vibrating in itself out of center. So I recentered it and then if you can see I put a little screw through the handle and I was trusting that the power cord went from here straight into the motor and not through the handle, which seems to be the case because now when I plug it in, I get a nice smooth operation. And it's not vibrating itself out of place. It's holding it in place real well. So I think that's going to work. Considering how much this thing's going to vibrate, I decided to go with six screws instead of four. Next step is going to be to cut this cord and install a dimmer switch. That way I can control the speed of the motor. And I've got a, an extension cord to put on, so I've got a longer cord to plug it into the wall. Rubber grommet for the power cord. A dimmer switch mounted here. It seems to be centered real well. And the plywood has full, full motion, range of motion inside without touching the edges. I think, well, I'm, I don't know. It makes an awful racket when you run it. And the entire assembly will walk across the countertop. Spins for quite a while as it's slowing down. But I think that's as good as it's going to get. The only step that remains is to attach some uh, buffing material, fabric, or something to the platter. And then I need to line each of these 16 tubes with some carpeting. I'm using a microfiber cloth on the platter, and I was careful to apply hot glue along the perimeter top and bottom as well as the edge of the plywood platter because I want to make sure it's secure. Uh, that thing's going to be spinning at high RPM when it's running. All right. Done. Than a few minutes later. I have to say, compared to the videos of other uh, homemade ball washer constructions that I've seen, this one seems pretty violent. <laughs> it's really tossing those balls around. And I wonder if that has to do with the fact that I attached a 17-inch diameter wood platter to the, the plat platform on the, on the polisher which was only designed to hold those, those foam polishing rings. So that extra weight and size may be, may be uh, putting a lot of extra load on that motor. I wonder how long that polish is going to last. Also, I wonder if it might be beneficial to replace the polisher instead of one that has an oscillating action, just with one that only spins and doesn't oscillate. I think that'll still provide plenty of movement, and maybe this thing won't shake itself apart. But all that said, I really like the hinge feature. You open it up and there's your balls. You can easily grab them out one at a time, give them a final polish with a cloth. And I think it did an excellent job. So there we have it. A 16 ball pool ball washer.
with variable speed control, individual compartments for each ball, and a lifting lid for easy removal. I'd say not bad for a first effort. It's definitely functional. I don't know how long that motor is going to last, but I'm going to find out. And I think the cost came in a little less than $100. I'll look at my receipts and maybe uh, itemize it for you. 16 ball ball washer 1.0. Hope you enjoyed that. I appreciate any comments, uh, things I might have done better. And I'd like to see your custom ball washers so I can make a better one when I construct version 2.0. Make sure to head over to shortstoponpool.com to see information about my book, A Shortstop on Straight Pool. And check out the description for a link to the book trailer and to a podcast interview with Nate Mindham of the Cue It Up podcast. See you next time.